This is a quick video of how to install the Cassetta Wireless Single Pole Dimmer, meaning you only have one switch controlling the lights. The first thing you want to do before you get started is turn off the circuit breaker to the room you'll be working in. A lot of times the room is listed on the panel as it should be. In this case it's the master for me, so I find circuit breaker 15 and go ahead and flip it off. That'll turn off power to everything in the bedroom that you'll be working in. In this case, it's really important to turn off the power, otherwise you could get a big shock. Once the power to the room is shut off, go in and flip the switch a few times to make sure the power is indeed off. And then with a flathead screwdriver, remove the faceplate. And now remove the switch from the wall box with a Phillips screwdriver. Now pull the switch away from the wall. Since this is a single pole, you'll have three screws. The green screw, usually connected to a bare copper wire or a green wire, is your ground. You'll be removing all of these screws from the switch. I'm removing here the ground wire first. And then with some needle nose pliers, just straighten out the ground wire because it will be connected with a wire nut. In a single pole switch, meaning you only have one switch going to one light circuit, you don't need to differentiate the other two wires. Simply remove them from the switch. If you have these new switches in your house, they're uh, a simple install and they're relatively simple to uninstall if you do it right. If you have a really small flathead screwdriver, uh, you just insert it all the way till it goes in deep and then the wires go out easily. Here my flathead screwdriver is just a little bit too big, it has a little bit too big of a flange on there so I can't get it in there quite so I had to work it just a little bit to get it out. In the future ones I used a smaller screwdriver to get it in there a lot further so it was much easier to pull out. If it's screwed in that's also easy too. Just straighten it out like you did the ground wire. So this is the dimmer that I picked up. It's the Cassetta Wireless Dimmer. It's the model 6WCL. They range in price depending on the quantity between $58 and $65. So this includes the three wire nuts and the screws, everything you need for your assembly. There are other similar models that you may want to consider, like the 5NE model. It has the favorite button right on the dimmer itself, and it has fewer quirks that I will talk about in another video. But it's something that you should consider before you buy a whole lot of them. I'll put a link in the description for the different models. So you can see for this dimmer, there are three wires coming out. The only different wire is the green wire. The green wire connects to your ground coming out of the wall. The ground wire is the copper wire or another green wire. So you simply take a wire nut. They provide three wire nuts for you to connect these. Uh, you just match the ends up. You'll notice that this wire is indeed the copper wire, the bare copper wire. It's not covered in an insulation. So you just take the yellow nut and then twist clockwise until it's tight and you can feel the wires taking attention. That means they're connected well. And you do the same with the other two wires. One wire to each of the wires coming out of your wall box. This one is a pretty easy, simple installation because it's all one-to-one. -one. It doesn't matter if you get the two black traveler wires mixed because they are interchangeable. As long as you get your green wire connected to your bare copper ground wire, the other two wires connected to each individual dimmer wire should work for you. So when you're finished with this one, it should look like this. Ground wire going to green, the other two wires separately connected to the individual wires coming off of the dimmer. And that's it. So you put it, all the wires back into the wall box. Just shove them in there as far as you can go.
The dimmer switch is a little bit bigger than other switches, so you may have to shove it just a little bit farther in. But essentially you're going to take the screws and screw them back in just like the other ones. Remember these screws go in the bigger holes that are on the switch. Sometimes after you finish installing these switches, you'll notice that it's slightly tilted to one side or the other. A lot of times I've noticed that it's the wires behind the dimmer that make it lean to one side or the other. So obviously with the power off, you may want to go in there and readjust the wires so that you can get it um, in a better position flush against the wall. Remember the faceplate that you put on here will be connected straight to this metal piece. So you can kind of finagle it and see if you can get it in a better placement. Once you have it securely mounted into the gang box, it's time to put on the wall plate. This wall plate that I got, it's pretty nice. I just got a 10 pack from Beston. Just a one gang screwless wall plate. Got it on Amazon. The 10 pack at the time cost me 16 bucks. So these are relatively cheap. You can buy more expensive ones from Lutron and some other manufacturers that have just slightly different style. But this one, it comes with the screws. You essentially put the screw part first on, and then you pop this other face plate over the top of it. So it's screwless after you put on the front face plate. So it's a little easier if you stick the screw in the faceplate and then match it up with your screwdriver and then line it up with the small holes that are on the dimmer plate and just screw it in. Now these don't need to be extremely tight. It may depend on the wall, but the tighter you screw them in, it kind of misshapes the plastic piece. So just put them in to where they're snug and they won't come apart from the wall. Once you have the face plate screwed on, the front cover has a top, it just snaps right on top of there. And it covers the edges quite nicely. Sometimes there's a recess between the dimmer and the face plate. Different brands of face plate may be different, but a lot of times it has to do with the mounting. Once the face plate is on, it's now safe to turn on the power. Go to your circuit breaker and turn the power back on. Now we'll show you how to connect it to the app. You notice that I already have some things set up, but go to settings and then just add device. And then it thinks about it for a little bit. Uh, in this case, we're going to put an in-wall dimmer, which was the top option. Okay. It says just hold the bottom button of the dimmer. So you hold it until it starts blinking rapidly. Then we're going to put it in what room? So you can choose whatever room you want. In this case, I'll just put the office. This is mainly for the name, so it will write a name for it that's already pre-programmed. In this case, I'm going to put the main ceiling lights. So then it takes a few seconds to add the device. Remember that you do need the hub to add these. And that's it. It added it. Now you'll notice my Amazon Ashmexa, it already linked to it and gave it a name and it works right out of the bat. You can use it right away in any of your scene selections. So you can control it from the Amazon Ashmexa app, the HomeKit app, or your Google app. And it works great. Hey, if you found this helpful, I really would appreciate a subscription from you. If you would just subscribe, it only takes a second. And we'll bring some more great videos for you. Thanks.